of the new liturgical year. So this year we will be reading from Matthew. This is Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son of God, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake therefore for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, and he would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming and an unexpected hour. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you again, choir. Wonderful. Truly wonderful. If you were to ask Carolyn, my wife, about watching the news with me on television, she would probably tell you that I'm not the best at watching the news. That's, I guess, because I came from a background before coming full-time into ministry of working in news uh, for quite a long time. And so I tend to get a little critical when things aren't going on, especially if people are late on their cues or the VT doesn't roll in the right time or anything like that. I am not the best. I have to accept that. I am my worst when the news is covering a hurricane or some other big weather event. Because it always, it, I just cannot understand why you have a guy standing outside telling everybody to go and shelter in place, to find their safe space, and he is hanging on to a railing being blown through the wood. It just doesn't make sense to me. Or standing in two feet of water saying there's a seven foot surge coming. What are you doing there? Why? What is it that you are trying to convey to us? Perhaps we should pray first. Let's pray. God of the wind and waves, help us to be the masters of ourselves that we might truly be the servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hands and do your good works. Take our lives and live out your life. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. Talking about storms and things like that, have you ever heard that moment of silence that comes before the storm? You know that time when everything goes quiet? Sometimes, as we saw with Hurricane Ian, this great coverage that was going on there, how the waves and the water tend to go away from the land before they start their big surge back. That moment when silence falls and even the birds stop singing. That eerie blanket of quiet descends all around and you know something ominous is about to occur. For us, that's a 
storm, a hurricane, or some other natural disaster. And for all our gifts as human beings, we are the last creatures on the earth, it seems, to sense that there is a momentous event about to happen. Scientists believe that because animals have a better sense of sound vibration than we do, they can sense these things early. They sense a drop in barometric pressure. And when low pressure systems are coming, they react appropriately. Sharks swim out into deep water. Creatures go and hide in their burrows or in their crevices in the rocks. Bees go back to their hives. And birds stop singing. There is the sound of silence. One physicist, Amos Dolbear, Amos Dolbear, if you know anything about him, claimed to have made the telephone 11 years before Alexander Bell, but because he didn't write anything down, because he didn't put anything in paper or to a patent, he lost out to Alexander Bell. That same guy wrote a paper that says, you can tell the temperature based on the frequency of a cricket's chirp. It's a paper that's been written and used. There's a formula, it's called the Dolbear formula. Some humans, I guess, do sense when things are changing. There are some for whom when pressure drops, they get a sinus pressure or a headache. But most of us are taken by surprise until we see the sky darken and the trees begin to sway in the wind. And then suddenly, we notice the calm before the storm. You see, we depend so much now on weather reports that science can pay attention and help alert us, warn us of the arrival. Even then, it can't predict how it will run its course. We only need to look back at Hurricane Ian to see. It was going to land here and then suddenly it moves and people are caught off guard. Tropical storms, it seems, are our most dangerous, partly because of that unpredictability. And those who live in the south of the United States, hello to our snowbirds, good to see you. I hope you're enjoying the weather down there. We're facing rain, but we're okay. They know that because of hurricane season, they need to be prepared. Well, they don't live their lives, of course, every day expecting an impending disaster, but it's note to be ready. Hurricane doors are sometimes installed, windows are strengthened, a backup generator might be put in place. Some will build shelters, others will take out flood insurance when they can. Communities will install dams or water breaks and people will be ready with sandbags to put at the door if they need to. They may have first aid kits ready, they will stock up on food when it's needed. They work out the what-if evacuation plan that might be needed. They educate each other as to the safest place to be in the house if something should happen. They keep flashlights and batteries and blankets on hand. They consult the how-to list, the how-to-survive in these circumstances. And when things grow silent and the sky begins to darken, then their plan goes into action. Some disasters, of course, are more unpredictable. Volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, meteors, solar flares, tsunamis, sinkholes. Sometimes they happen without any warning or appear to have no warning. 
suddenly taking everybody off guard. You remember that game? <coughs> well, we certainly used to play it, and I'm sure you played it here in America too, where you would put a ring of chairs around, and people had to walk around the outside of the chairs as the music played. And when the music stopped, you ran and sat on a chair. And every time you started again, a chair was removed. And you get those kids who would walk really slowly past the chairs and then run, and then walk slowly past the next chair until the music stopped and then they would try and sit. There is something similar to that going on. Those who couldn't get to a chair were cast out of the circle. And that would occur over time until eventually one person was declared the winner. Well, music can also be used in a form of gag called musicalis interruptus. I had, I, I had great fun looking this up, I have to say. Musicalis interruptus is where you might have a passage being played and suddenly it stops. And that might be used as an opportunity to speak about somebody or to roast somebody or to pass on information. It's a, a device that's used to gather attention to what is going on. Suddenly, the music stops. Now, of course, these fun things, the game and the music, make me think about sound. When things stop and go silent, it always signals something is about to happen. Something new is about to happen. You know that moment where you might be sitting, listening, waiting, and the orchestra's playing that cacophony of sound at the very beginning as they're trying to tune their instruments or play parts of what they're going to practice, pl playing parts of what they're going to do, and then suddenly it goes silent. And then the tuning starts. Usually the first violin will give an A, and everybody tunes. And then there is silence. before the music starts. When the hymn stops and a call to worship begins, when a soundtrack stops and you know something in the movie is about to happen, when the music stops, something is about to end and something else is about to begin. The American idiom slang for when the music stops means you don't get another chance. You're all out of extensions. You've come to the end of the road. You get a gist for this in Don McLean's song, American Pie, which is a tribute, of course, to Buddy Holly and others that were killed in a plane crash. The line, when the music died. Go on, you're all singing it in your head now, aren't you? There was a sudden demise. Three of rock and roll's giants were lost in that plane crash. These events that take us by surprise, in fact, it is the element of surprise that causes us so much grief and shock. And yet we know that life can change suddenly and unexpectedly. And while we, not, while we need not live our lives waiting for it to happen, we do need to be aware. We need to ensure our best safety measures are in place to try and live out our lives as best we can. And in a sense, this is what Jesus is explaining to his disciples in Matthew's Gospel today. No one knows the time, not even Jesus, when he will return when the music of this earth, the world and the chatter will come to an end. 
And we cannot live in perpetual fear and paralysis and anxiety of that. But we must try and figure out the kind of plans, the diagrams that might be needed. Because none of that will help us work out. You know, there's been so many people who have tried to tell us when the end of the world is coming, books that have been written on it, people who said it would happen at this date and this date, and the dates pass, and then they say, oh, well, there was a slight error in the calculation. It's probably another two years away. I guess one day you might get it right. But we don't know. That's the whole point. Only the Father knows. But we do need to live our best lives in gratitude for the time that we have now. The time that we have been given in prayer to God and in worship to him. The one who makes our lives possible. We need to live in faith. Assured that when Jesus does come, when the world changes, when the music stops, we've done our best as human beings on this earth. We've loved well. We've shared well. We've forgiven much. We've shown mercy to those around us. We've understood those whom we've met. You see, Jesus compares the finality to the Noah story. Life went on as usual, he says, until the day Noah went into the ark. But we're told no one knew. And no one will know this time either. But like Noah, we can remain faithful to God, to trust our God, to live our best lives. We can plan to be the best we can be. We can prepare ourselves, our hearts and our minds and our spirits for the coming of the coming of the Lord. We can stay awake, as it says in the gospel, to the presence of the Spirit around us, to stay in tune with our Lord Jesus Christ. We can be prepared and ready for a storm that can come. Even if we don't know when it will hit. Even if we don't know it will sweep us away or not. But more than that, we can do this because God expects us to do more. Today as we enter into this time of Advent, a time in which we remind ourselves to focus on God and God's coming in Son, it's a time of spiritual alertness. A time in which we engage ourselves more deeply in our relationship with Jesus. We as human beings can be a little absent-minded and distracted by the ways of the world. Our own tempestuous lives, we can get caught up in conflicts and stubbornness and petty things. We can lose our focus and allow the flame of our passion for Christ to burn low. But we can get busy. Often, we get busy with superficial things. Advent is like an alarm clock that wakes us up, reminds us to pay attention to the coming day, to enjoy the music of God's voice in our lives and the chatter of the streets below, but for one day, remembering that the music will stop, that the world will grow silent, there will be calm before the storm and a new day will begin. We have one chance, one chance to live our lives in this world. Only one. We don't get another chance. Let us therefore live our lives making amends with God and with each other. Extending our arms out in love, welcoming all. Until eventually the music stops. So take heart this day. Take heart. Wake up to the spirit of truth that is in Christ. Stir up your hearts to love all around you 
in the beauty of this amazing world. Be a part of God's symphonic relational creation and dance as though the music would go on forever, but knowing it could stop at any time. The sound of silence, the call of God, the calm before the storm, the new beginning that comes in Christ. Amen. This is the great hope, that though we may think things come to an end, in Christ Jesus, they continue. So let us go from this place in that knowledge that God's love is with each and every one of us. Let's take that love into a world that so desperately needs it and offer them the hope that through Jesus, they too may find a sense of peace at this Christmas time. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>